All right, it's the morning of day two, and uh, we are here in uh, Marco Island, Florida. And uh, we had a great night last night. It was a great trip down to Marco, probably the best weather we could have ever imagined. It was smooth, sunny, uh, tailwinds the whole way, which was phenomenal, shocking. Uh, very grateful to the uh, big man upstairs for that, it was awesome. So today, we are uh, gonna head over to the Bahamas first. We're gonna do a fuel stop. Um, as I mentioned before, it's not something we have to do, but just wanna get more experience and check out a new island. So we're gonna stop um, at uh, Mike Yankee Echo Mike is the airport identifier. It's um, Governor's Harbor on Eleuthera Island. And um, I had called down there and, and talked to uh, the FBO and they basically said for just a fuel stop, we would need um, the general declarations in. So I've got a uh, just a, a printed copy that they sent me of the Bahamas Gen Deck in. And then at the end here, uh, I have the, uh, that's a similar form, it's the Gen Deck out. So we'll fill those out, kind of have as much as we can pre-filled. And then uh, when we arrive, uh, we'll give them the Gen Decks in, the Gen Decks out. We'll pay, a, I think it was a $28 per person fee. Um, we'll get a little bit of gas and then we'll uh, continue on to um, Providentialis and the Turks and Caicos. Um, so today is kind of the start of like the unknowns, you know, I'm not 100% sure, I've never been to the Bahamas, never been to Turks and Caicos, so uh, a lot of this will just have to play it by ear. And whenever you're, whenever like at the airlines, you travel internationally, you know, not everything goes perfect. So, uh, you know, just uh, I, everybody I found is very friendly, as long as we're courteous back, um, they've always been willing to help. So um, our logistics plan for today is, we're going to leave here. We're going to go um, to the local Walgreens and do COVID tests. They wouldn't let us schedule them at the same time, so there's an hour gap in there. Um, so we're going to see when we can get the COVID tests. And we're using that because we're only going to be gone for less than 24 hours. So our goal is to be able to use that as our COVID test back into the U.S. We already have the one that Andrew Turks and Caicos done. That was within three days. So we're going to go get the COVID tests. Um, as long as we can bo both get those like together, then the next step is going to be to file the EAPIS, the Electronic Advance Notice of Our Passenger Manifest, basically, to CBP. So I'll file that to, to let them know um, where we're going. So whenever you leave the U.S. or come back from the U.S., you need to file an EAPIS or file with the EAPIS. So I'll notify CBP that we're departing. We're not leaving from an airport of entry, so we're going to note that, you know, the closest airport of entry and we'll note our actual airport location on, on the, uh, the manifest. And then we'll file our flight plans. Um, I don't know about cell signal in the Bahamas, so I'm gonna file everything uh, out of here before we, uh, before we leave. Uh, so we'll file EAPIS, we'll file our flight plans, and uh, then we'll head out to the airport. Um, once we get our negative COVID tests, uh, then we'll plan to head out to the Bahamas. If we <laughs> one of us could test positive, then we'll probably, uh, I, I would probably retest just to verify it was a legit positive and then we'd probably have to head back or something. So anyway, that's the plan for today. Um, and hopefully we'll get some cool video footage. I'm really excited. Uh, I've never flown out in the Caribbean in our plane. Um, and I'm gonna keep us at, I think 11,000 feet. So at least we get a little better visual of the islands that are out there. There's a lot of islands in the Bahamas and the Caribbean. Um, so for those of you maybe in a single engine airplane like a Cirrus, you're never really that far from shore. So anyway, uh, I guess we'll uh, see you in flight. All right, so we're in the uh, Walgreens parking lot of Marco Island. We just did our uh, nasal swab drive through. So we both took our COVID test. We'll await that so we can use that to get back into the States uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we hopped on to the CBP uh, website for the EAPIS, filed our EAPIS notice of departure uh, with the passenger manifest. And then I filed both flight plans. Usually I have international cell service, but sometimes there's a problem. So I figured I'd file both flight plans and uh, we'll just have to do our best to stay on time. And so now we're gonna go top off the rental car and head out to the airport. All right, well, we are just climbing Number out. Six, three, five, uh, four, whiskey. Just south of Marco family. Island. Clear we're uh, about 9,500 feet. Whiskey. You can see kind of our route of flight here. American 2777. We're going to cross the south part of Florida Contact and then head east across Nassau into Governor's two. Harbor. Two four zero two, see you, Out here is pretty remote, but very pretty area of Florida. But not a lot out there except probably a lot of gators. Our flight time is about an hour and a half to Governor's Island, and we'll try and update you in a little bit. All right, so we are uh, just about to the Florida Keys if you look down here on the map. We're about UPS seven miles, and uh, I don't know if you can two, then four, go out four, to the right five, there. Two, four, you can five, see five, the uh, two, strand three, of land down there. I know it's hard with the focusing there, but it's really pretty. The Florida Keys are absolutely amazing. 
They extend all the way down from Key Largo out to Key West. Pretty cool area. And then uh, kind of in route here, I've been doing paperwork because, you know, I love paperwork. So we've been filling out the, um, the general declarations for the Bahamas. I filled out three copies for the inward and then three copies for the outward. And, um, you know, it's following their instructions, so hopefully uh, I did it okay and we don't get in trouble. But um, it's a lot of paperwork. You could certainly fill it out, but I figured it would give us uh, something to do in flight. Uh, at any rate, oh, there it is. Uh, really pretty flight, and uh, we'll just keep updating you as we get a little closer. All right, so we're making an approach into uh, Governor's Harbor. For 1-1, one, one, we'll do a little circle out here until the Challenger's clear. Just Governor's Harbor, Twin Cessna 902 Bravo Alpha, turning final runway 15, full stop, Governor's Harbor. We're just a little bit high, we're going to come down and catch the glide slope here. Absolutely beautiful. All right, back on the glide path here. Quite bumpy today. Lot of there. Governor's Harbor, Twin Cessna 902, Bravo Alpha, short final 15, full stop, Governor's Harbor. Three green down and locked, yacht ampers off, full flaps. Good mix of planes here. Some bigger and some smaller. All right, so we just landed at uh, Governor's Harbor. I shouldn't say we just landed. I should say uh, we uh, cleared the customs. So it was kind of cool. You know, we learned a lot. I'm glad we stopped here. Uh, you go in, you have to do uh, the general declarations in and the general declarations out exactly what we said. Uh, they didn't quite know if they would want us to bring our luggage in, but they said, you know, just because we were transient, we didn't, in this case, have to bring our luggage in. If you had anything other than personal luggage, you would have had to bring that in. Um, everybody was super friendly. Uh, just a note, if you go into this, it's a it's a separate building right behind where the Falcon is here, and you just walk up under the overhang and knock on the door. But there was two people in there. We didn't know there was anybody in there. They didn't hear us walk in the building. So we just kind of sat there waiting for about 15 minutes until... Uh, uh, the fuel person came in and knocked on one of the doors. So if you happen to stop in Governor's uh, Terrain, Island, system or, uh, test, okay. Governor's Harbor uh, Airport here, just make sure you knock on the office doors and they'll come. Super friendly. Um, and then the other thing is they only take cash for the customs. So uh, just make sure you have customs. I think it was $116. Uh, that was to clear in and out process and the landing fee. Uh, the landing fee was very inexpensive for a piston. I think it was like $8. So it wasn't really much, but the customs processing in and the customs processing out, it was a total of $116. So just make sure you have cash. And uh, anyway, it was a great stop. We're going to head out to Providentialis. Pretty amazing. Governor's Harbor Traffic, Twin Cessna 902 Bravo Alpha. Left crosswind will be a left downwind departure. Governor's Harbor. All right, so right now we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and I will say that it's absolutely beautiful. Lots of little islands out here. Um, actually, if you if you take a look here, you know, we can zoom in, and you can just see there's just islands. These little specks everywhere, just tons and tons of islands. Uh, now, what we're doing is we're going to get ready for uh, Providentialis, um, uh, the airport, and so uh, the first thing we can do is we listen to what's called ATIS, and you can listen, it's an automated, uh, basically, airport information, so we got ATIS. Uh, one interesting thing that I'm going to I'm gonna note here in a second, Pilots read back the QNH and report India received on 119.9 and 126.0 on initial contact. So, uh, their transition altitude, so if you zoom in here, their transition altitude is actually 6,000. So, whenever you fly internationally, it's really important that you uh, you check this chart, and whatever chart you're using. But make sure you know what transition altitude is, because we're going to maintain 2, 9, or 9, or 2, uh, or standard, all the way until we get to 6,000 feet 
Then we'll go to um, 3004, the Q&H. So that's the uh, that's altimeter setting, Q&H, 3004. So when we call them up, we'll just say that we have India, 3004. Um, now, Miami just told us that we're in an area of unreliable radio and radar coverage. So uh, he said to stay on this frequency. So we're staying on his frequency for now. And if we had like an emergency, we could do a relay, uh, you know, notification to another airplane. Uh, but for right now, yeah, we're just kind of out here on our own and we're getting set up. So they said that the RMP runway 10 approaches in use. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and get ready. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to hit my procedures approach. I'm going to load the RNAV. So Interesting enough here, I'm going to load the RNAV-10 GPS approach Hello, and American load. Six, uh, okay, so that's in there. So I see the fixes here. The final approach fix is 1,700 feet. So then if I come in the chart here, I'm just going to verify there's 1,700 feet at the final approach fix of Imusu. Um, just, it's, it's, uh, just a few clouds, so it's going to be a visual approach. But the bottom altitude would be 278 feet. I can program that on the uh, PFD here, and if we have a minute, I'll I'll show you how to do that. But since it's visual, I'm just going to leave it off for now. But 278 feet will be the uh, bottom altitude of the GPS approach. If we have to go missed approach, we've got the publish here, but with visual, I try to stay with uh, I try to stay with tower. Um, now, mention the RNP. So you'll notice they say RNP approach. But up here, we have RNAV approach. So one of the interesting things, just to know for U.S. pilots, is that internationally, they're going to use the term RNP. And for us, you know, U.S.ers, RNP is generally only going to be by a, 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 an authorization to do RNP approaches, which generally in the U.S. are complex turning approaches, turning arrivals, turning departures. And the RNP approaches, um, or even visual approaches, um, is or they're pretty amazing if you've ever done one. But internationally, they're going to call RMP just an RNAV approach. So if you're just, you know, if you just have a Garmin uh, basic GPS package, you can do the RMP approaches uh, overseas. The only thing that you always have to check for is make sure it's in your database. Just note the difference in terminology. So uh, we've set that up. We've got our ATIS information. We're going to uh, call uh, Providentialis when we get over Gowana, which is 33 miles away, and we'll let them know. And then uh, we'll try and get you some more video when we get uh, close to the Turks. Providence Haley is number 5 Alpha. And confirm 902 Bravo Alpha, we clear to land. Confirm 2 Bravo Alpha, cleared to land. Clear to land, 902 Bravo Alpha. All right, we're cleared to land, runway 10. That is some color of water out there. Right now we're just letting the autopilot fly. All right, we'll just check the autopilot. Full flaps, the yacht amper's off. At Providence Haley is November 5 Alpha with a clearance squawking 47. Bring her in down and lock. Yacht Amber's on. Just stand by for taxi. Okay, stand by November 5 Alpha. Take in the diary for departure. Hey, firm. Roger, behind the SAS 9, turn back track 10 behind. Okay, behind the SAS 9, enter back track uh, runway 10, Air Canada 1251. November 5 Alpha, you can taxi up to Holding Point Hotel, Hoshaw. Okay, taxi to Holding Point uh, 10 uh, at Hoshaw. So we uh, landed at uh, Providentialis. It was uh, mostly uneventful, had an amazing day. And day number two, we ended at the Seven Stars Resort. And this place is pretty unbelievable. If you can see the ocean there, it's amazing. We got into our room, and I don't know if they thought we were on our honeymoon or what, but they had a bottle of wine and a couple of glasses. So anyway, really amazing place uh, down here in Providentialis in the Turks and Caicos. Amazing water. It's pretty windy though. You can see there's actually some uh, some pretty good waves there. 